The GM 700R4 turbo hydromatic transmission is the go-to transmission for many who are restoring an antique or classic GM vehicle. The most common version bolts directly to a Chevy engine and there are also Buick Olds and Pontiac versions. It is popular because it has an overdrive gear and because it has a relatively low first gear. It is also popular because it is plentiful and inexpensive. Often a good running 700 R4 can be had for as little as a few hundred dollars on Craigslist. Although there is a lot of information about this transmission online, I have yet to see anything which shows how the listed gear ratios are achieved. That's the purpose of this video. The gear ratios for this transmission are shown here. They are first gear 3.06 to 1, second gear 1.63 to 1, third gear 1 to 1, and fourth gear 0.7 to 1, and reverse 2.29 to 1. In the 700R4, the gear ratios are achieved by the use of planetary gear sets. A planetary gear set is shown here. It consists of a sun gear in the center, a planet carrier with four or five smaller planet gears set in the middle, and a ring gear on the outside. For a more detailed analysis of the general operation of a planetary gear set, please refer to other videos on YouTube and elsewhere online. There are many excellent easy to understand animated videos on the subject. This video will focus on the 700 R4 transmission exclusively. The transmission changes gears by setting one of the planetary gear components in motion and holding or stopping another. The stop stationary component is sometimes referred to as the reactionary. The starting and stopping is achieved by the use of clutches controlled by the transmission's hydraulic system, or in the case of roller or sprag clutches by the direction of travel. The ratios available in a planetary gear set are a function of the number of teeth in the sun, planets, and ring. The more frequently used formulas for determining the gear ratios are shown here. Different formulae are used depending on the configuration, either reduction, overdrive, direct drive, or reverse. The 700R4 transmission consists of two planetary gear sets mounted back to back and strategically connected. This increases the number of possible gear ratios. This picture shows the internals of the 700R4 transmission minus the clutch packs. Notice there is a front planetary and a rear planetary. The front planetary is sometimes called the input planetary and the rear planetary is sometimes called the reaction planetary. In this picture the front of the transmission is to the right. The two gear sets of this transmission have the number of gear teeth as shown in this table. The discussion that follows shows how the teeth are used to make up the gear ratios for the four forward gears and one reverse ratio in a 700 R4 transmission. This rough sketch of the transmission in neutral shows diagrammatically how the gear sets are tied together in a 700 R4. The input shaft and drum are shown on the left. The output shaft on the right, the planetary gear sets between them. The front of the transmission is on the left in this diagram. Note that the front ring and the rear planet carrier are connected together and that the front carrier and the rear ring are both permanently connected to the output shaft. The reverse input clutch housing surrounds the input shaft housing 
and front planetary gear set. The forward clutch, 3-4 clutch, low reverse clutch, reverse input clutch, sprag clutch and roller clutch are all used to either hold a transmission component stationary or make it turn in unison with the input drum. The overrun clutch is for engine braking when manual low, manual second or manual third is selected. The transmission is in neutral in this sketch because all the clutches are off. No input and no reactionary. The remaining sketches show what happens when we now put the car in drive and step on the throttle. The color convention shown on this sketch will be the same on all the subsequent sketches to illustrate the configuration of the gear components. First gear. For first gear, the forward clutch is on and the low roller clutch is holding. The forward clutch, which is on for all forward gears in drive 4, makes the front sun gear the input. In first gear, the low roller clutch prevents the front ring gear from turning backward, making it reactionary. The sun gear input, the ring gear reactionary, and the front planet carrier as the output gives the reduction ratio according according to the formula shown here. This is 1 plus the number of teeth on the ring gear divided by the number of teeth on the sun gear. For the front planetary gear set, this is 1 plus 70 divided by 34, giving a first gear ratio of 3.06 to 1. This ratio will allow you to easily light your tires off the line. Second gear. For this transmission, second gear is the most difficult to explain. For second gear, the servo applies the 2-4 band making the rear sun gear stationary. The low roller clutch is no longer holding. Again, the front sun gear is the input. The front ring is no longer stationary but moves forward slowly and this is what reduces the gear ratio. The amount the front ring moves is controlled by the connected rear planetary carrier, which is in turn connected to the output shaft. Remember that the front ring, rear planet carrier, and the output shaft are all locked together. As the output shaft turns, it causes the front ring to move forward in proportion to the ratio of the ring to the sun in the rear planetary set. This speeds up the output effectively raising the gear ratio. The amount the front ring moves forward is proportional to the overdrive gear ratio of the rear planetary gear set. Therefore, second gear can be thought of as first gear in overdrive. The formula for overdrive is shown in the lower right corner of this sketch. This gives a ratio of 0.696 as we will see when we discuss fourth gear. Using this value in the formula for second gear, shown in the upper right, results in a second gear ratio of 1.625. This is usually reported as 1.63 in the literature. This is also a nice low second gear ratio. Many times this will allow you to again light the tires. Third gear. Third gear uses only the forward clutch and the 3-4 clutch. This ties the front sun gear and the front ring gear together and to the input drum. The rules of planetary gears dictate that whenever two of the three components of a planetary gear set are tied together, you have direct drive. Ratio 1 to 1. The front planetary gear is the output. The rear planetary gear set is also turning as a unit, as in direct drive. Fourth gear. Fourth gear uses the 3-4 clutch, as was used in third, but also applies the 2-4 band. Again, the forward clutch is applied because it is on whenever the gear selector is in D4. 
However, the forward clutch and the connected front sun gear are not the input for this gear. The forward sprag clutch releases the front sun gear and allows it to move slightly faster than the input drum. This frees the front planetary gears from direct drive and allows the motion to transfer from the front ring carrier to the connected rear planet carrier. With the rear sun stationary, the motion transfers to the output rear ring gear. This is the classic overdrive configuration which uses the formula shown here for the rear gear set giving a ratio of 0.696 usually reported as 0.7 for this transmission. Reverse is the only gear that applies the reverse input clutch. This clutch ties the input drum to the rear sun gear. In addition, the low reverse clutch is applied, making the rear planet carrier stationary. This time, the front planetary gears are idling and have no effect on the gear ratio. In accordance with the classic gear formula, sun in, ring out, and carrier stationary is reverse. If we apply this formula to the rear gear set teeth, 34 sun teeth and 78 ring teeth, we get a ratio of 2.29. In summary, the clutch configurations are exactly as described in the General Motors documentation for this transmission. The GM engineers obviously put a lot of effort into designing the 700R4 and the result is a great transmission. This video is intended to help the backyard mechanic understand and be able to diagnose the 700R4. Your comments are welcomed. If you happen to see anything that is incorrect, do not hesitate to contact me.